what you were looking at is a CGI image that, um, to the best of my knowledge, looks like it was done in Blender, and it's something that probably looks like, uh, for example, maybe 1080p. Now, from what I've been reading on this article, there's talk about, you know, drive, you know, having CGI that runs at, you know, about 4K. You know, I just think that this is impossible. There's no way in hell you can cram one or two Titan Zs into a PS6 or 7 and not even make the thing so expensive that you will just go broke after making a couple of them or end up creating an absolute power hog bastardization of a... It does, it's not going to work. I don't see how this is actually going to bloody well work because, I mean, look at some of these CGI images. How the hell is a, you know, bloody uh, piece of silicon chip, how the, is that going to drive graphics like this? Or, like, better than this, like 4K graphics in real time? I just don't really get how this is going to be possible without having four or something or eight Titan Zs. You know, it's going to this is going to cost the cons, you know the consumer a metric fuck ton and it's going to cost the developer so so much that there's just no way to pay for it your games are going to go from being $90 to about $800 each i really don't see how really high resolution cgi on silicon chips is even possible at a commercial level at all, unless you're willing to spend about the same amount you'd spend on a Mercedes-Benz on your computer. It really just goes beyond me as how you could do this in, you know, within the year, within the limitations of silicon chips. I mean, we can only die shrink, you know, something like the Titan Z so many times to reduce its power consumption. But there's going to come a point really, really quickly where you just can't, you know cram these things into you just can't get more power out of silicon chips i mean this card is nearly 400 watts and this is the most powerful graphics card we have so far now if you're to die shrink this you might be able to get it down to say 200 watts and get it onto one chip but even then you are very quickly going to be able to peg something with 5760 cuda cores if you're doing like really high-end resolutions. I don't see how you're going to be able to put something like that into something like a PlayStation 6 or 7 and legitimately expect that you're going to have, you know, that you're going to be able to A, afford it and B, deal with the tremendous energy consumption involved in this. And I know some people say that the cloud might be the saviour, but how the hell are you going to do this with 100,000 systems? The sheer computing power required to do this is just so fucking tremendous. It would be... It's just beyond what I think would be economically viable, basically, ever. We're talking, what, like 10 bloody gigawatts worth of power to probably run, you know, a cloud-based version of this. And you're talking more than just a couple billion bucks, just like maybe hundreds of billions of dollars to, you know, create a cloud server that could do this. I mean, it just seems beyond what you can do with silicon-based processes. I mean, maybe with a quantum computer, it would be bloody easy. I mean, you can do more computations than, you know, atoms in the known universe, but still those particular systems are years away. And... I mean, we're really starting to push these silicon chips to the point where they ain't just, they ain't going to put out more power anymore. You know, this is really quite a shock. I mean, this thing's got like 12 gigs of bloody RAM on it. And, you know, if you ran 4K stuff on this, I imagine this would eventually choke pretty, you know, pretty hard at some point. These are just my real, really just my thoughts on, you know, what I'm reading and seeing so far. And I quite frankly don't think you're going to be able to see... 4K coming out of your next PlayStation, the PlayStation after, or even the PlayStation after. In fact, truth be told, I think that the PS4 is more likely than not, you know, it's at 28 nanometers. And maybe, just maybe, you might get a P PS5 that's, 
10 nanometers but you go beyond that and these processes are just going to come to a complete stop there is just no way to defeat Moore's law and it's just going to kill you know it's going to kill the fucking consoles and you're not going to see a rise in compute power you are just flat out not going to see it you know you can do optimizations to software to make things faster but you know with that you also have limitations you can only squeeze so much power out of this hardware and you know on day zero you know you, that's all you're really going to have i mean with silicon chips it's all going to have to come to an end and that does mean that you know either these you know playstations are going to have to be quantum computers or yeah they're just not going to get a lot more powerful and the same applies to the xbox one and all silicon based hardware i don't think that you can with this the way technology is going reach 4k cgi and i don't think you can really just drive graphics in that way i don't think that the silicon chips we have just have the power to do it it's a bit like expecting a four-cylinder petrol engine to produce 8,000 horsepower without forced induction. It just goes flat out beyond what is possible, in my opinion. I mean, maybe, just maybe, you might be able to make a chip to do it using some really fancy architectures and technology, but the amount of money and effort that's likely to go into it will be insane. Simply put it here... I think I think two generations is so optimistic, you know, I think it's such an optimistic sort of, you know, view of it that I think it's just outright false. I don't think you could ever reach this with silicon chips. I mean, with a quantum computer, it would do it bloody easy, but with a silicon chip computer like all computers we have today, I do not see how in hell this is going to work. You know, it's just utterly amazing that, you know, this little you know this era of computing seems to be slowing down that's all ladies and gents um if you disagree with my video then well disagree with it if you like the video you know like the video if you want to subscribe then subscribe if you want to make a comment either positive or negative feel free to do so below and um yeah that's all